Hi everyone, we are finally here at the interval problem. So it's a problem from the course of long challenge, February. What it says is that you have this big array and you are going to be playing a game with an opponent using this array. So firstly, you are given the array and you have to choose a range from that array. When you choose a range, you get all the elements in that range, the, the sum of all the elements in your score. So you are given a score and the sum of all these elements get added up to your score. Your opponent does the same thing, but in a sub range of the range you have chosen. So you chose from two to five, you got the score of all elements from two to five. Your opponent plays three to four and they get a score. Player two gets a score from three to four. So three plus four. This is the value of the elements at position 3 and 4 and this is value of 2 plus value of 3 plus value of 4 plus value of 5. Then it's your turn. So you're playing turn by turn and your score is added. This quantity is added to whatever original thing you had. The value of 4. Whatever range you have here. So to understand this problem really well, you can look at the minimax algorithm. Uh, over there also you have two players playing optimally and each trying to reduce the other person's score and maximizing their own score in, in the process. So it's an interesting problem uh, requiring you to give an output of what is the final score that player 1 has. All right, player 1 will have the final score, let's say this is score 1 minus whatever final score player 2 has All right the original problem is defined in a slightly different way you can have a look at the link in the description below uh, what it says is a person's score is added then it's subtracted by this range then it's added again and so on and so forth it will give you the same answer uh, and the problem does not simplify if you do this so yeah minimax algorithm based problem how are you going to solve this? There is one more constraint though. In the input, you are given an array B. So B defines the kind of moves that you can make. On the very first move that you need to make, you are given B of 0, which is the size of the range that you have to choose. There is a guarantee that B, uh, B of 0 or any B of any i is uh, going to be greater than in fact, it's going to be less than b of i minus 1 because from that sub range you're going to be choosing lesser and lesser. The extreme two elements cannot be chosen in this range. So b is given to you in that way. Uh, but importantly, the size of the range is given to you. So at this uh, point, you could choose only uh, a range of 4. That's why you got this. Then you can range, uh, choose a range of 2. So you could have chosen 2 to 4. 2 to 3, I'm sorry then 3 to 4 or 4 to 5, nothing else because the range has to be of size 2 and similarly size 1, it could have been 3 or 4 and I have just given minus 1 over here uh, signifying that it doesn't, that there can't be a range smaller than 1 All right. so let's get to solving this so before we start solving this problem I'm going to be talking about a simple approach through which you can understand what the solution is for these kind of problems. Uh, it's dynamic programming and I personally was very afraid of dynamic programming because the matrices and all that uh, seems scary but I'm going to give you a three-step approach, a very simple one to understand if a problem can be solved by DP or no. Firstly, is the problem recursive? So you look at the original array, you're trying to maximize your score by choosing a range while taking into account all future possible moves of yourself and your opponent. Your opponent, after you know, being given the range that you have chosen, does the exact same thing. It needs to choose a range such that it maximizes its score and then takes into consideration all your and their possible moves in the future. So you are breaking your original problem into sub-problems, seems like a recursive solution. right? Divide and conquer is there, so recursiveness is there. Secondly, what I mean by no loops? This doesn't mean the for loop or while loop. Uh, it means that 
when you have gone to a, a position, uh, the next move, when you make a move, does that move uh, result depend on the previous move? So from here, from this position of four elements, can you ever go back to a position of eight elements? Right, uh, we had eight elements in the start, yeah. So is there any possibility that this goes back here? Or this goes back here? Or this goes back to a place which has five elements, let's say. In our given problem, no. We are always going to be choosing a range smaller than the given range. So that by definition means that we are going to be never going back to the past for a need to evaluate the position. So there are no loops. And we can safely say that if we are making a graph of the solution, it's going to be acyclic. So uh, the technical term is DAG, it's a DAG. A directed acyclic graph. If you want to go into the theory of dynamic programming, I would suggest, uh, I mean, I'll keep some links in the description below. But uh, just understand that you can't go back to the old solution in the past using a new one. All right? And the third one is optimal moves. So that is optimal substructure, you can say. It's a term that you probably have heard while doing dynamic programming. Uh, what it says is once you have chosen a move, it should not, the, the further moves should not depend on your previous moves. So there is no requirement of history in dynamic programming. For example, if you chose this range and there was a number two here, when making the move over here, you don't care about what is here. If this is optimal, you don't care about uh, what was the element at an index beyond your range now. Similarly, if I have minus six here, that should not affect the decision making here. So uh, let's say, let's say you have 50 and 100 over here. And minus six, having minus six, your final answer was 100. Even if you are 2000, somehow if this is optimal, then you don't care whatever this value was. So there is no need to maintain history to understand what the next decision has to be. Over here, you, you care about this value, but once you're here, you don't care about that value at all. all right? So optimal move making or optimal substructure is what you're looking at. These are the three key things that you need to do uh, dynamic programming with. So if you see a problem having this, then you know that it can be solved using DP, right? In fact, we can take this one step further. Uh, if you're choosing local optimum, is that also equal to global optimum? So if the fourth case holds, which is uh, local optimum, leads to global optimum. If this holds, then you can actually use a greedy approach, not just a DP approach. So take some time, if you want, you can pause the video to understand why local to global optimum is not working. All right, let's prove it. Well, you have the original array like this, which is 100, zero, 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 100, 20, 20, 20, and 50. All right, and this M is equal to two. So you can just make two moves now. So M is equal to two, uh, that's great. Uh, the range that you need to choose, which is B of zero, is five. All right. So the greedy approach says, go for the lo local optimum. So go for the range which gives you the maximum returns, which in this case is this range. Because that is equal to a sum of 100 plus, so 20, 20, 20 is 60, plus 50 is 110, plus 100 is 210. So 210 is the size that you'll have here. Uh, the size that you'll have through these five elements is 100 plus 100, which is 200. All right, so you'll be choosing this range, but then on the very next move, your opponent who has a B of one equal to three is going to be choosing this range. 20, 20, 20, 60. 
200 uh, and your final answer will be 210 minus 60 which is 150 but what you could have done was give your opponent a range 3 with these two elements excluded which is uh, 100 plus 100 200 minus remember that the leftmost and rightmost index cannot be taken in this range sub range that you are choosing so that would be 0 because the only possible is 0 0 0 and you would have 200 in your hand instead you got 150 so the greedy approach did not work this problem cannot be solved using a greedy approach but it has these three conditions working for it and therefore DP is the way to go all right now let's solve this problem and so now let's start with the DP solution so you need a recursive function for that and to construct that we'll be using these two observations so what happens after a move well the array gets crunched from the left and from the right also also the move index is incremented so move becomes move plus one and left becomes left plus one this is the leftmost index that you can go to and right becomes right minus one right what is the score that you're going to get? You're going to get the sum of all elements between left and right. And this can be found out by using pre-computed sums. So uh, sum of all elements from zero to R minus sum of all elements from zero to L minus one is going to give you this score. And pre-computation is very simple. You just need to take a cumulative sum from zero to I for all I. All right. So just to reiterate, when you're taking an answer for a particular move, uh, having starting from left, you take the sum of all elements between right and left, and then you uh, subtract the maximum possible for your opponent in the next move for all possible L, right? So this is what the uh, general case is. And your base condition is when you're on the last move, you just take uh, the sum of all elements between right and left. All right, right is defined by i plus b of move. All right, and your final answer will be given by range of move number zero. So the maximum possible in move number zero for all i, for all lefts possible. Right, so uh, in fact that is equal to i equal to 0 and uh, up to n minus b of 0. Oh, and if i plus b of mu is uh, greater than n, so if this is when i plus b of mu is less than equal to n, that's when you play this. Or, because we are taking 0 based indexing here, yeah, less than n. Uh, otherwise, this range is equal to 0. Okay. So that's an additional base condition that you need to look at. So this is your scenario. You have your array of size b of move. Let's call this n. You have a smaller array which will come in the next move for your opponent of size b of move plus one, which you can call k. And what you need to do is you need to take the smaller array and slide it across the original array to find whichever one is giving you maximum sum. Because this is the array that you are choosing. Your opponent is going to be taking some elements, elements from this of size k, uh, sub array size k, and subtracting them. So this is the reason why we are going to be using this sliding window approach. And uh, this given problem is a very standard problem. Sub array of size k, find out the maximum sum possible in, a sub in an array of size n. So there are three main approaches. Uh, one of them is an n square approach, which is brute force. Slide the window over every sub array and check for the sums. Uh, the second approach is if you use a heap, then you're actually going to be storing elements like this. So the largest is going to be stored at the root, and 
so on and so forth. You're going to be uh, storing the uh, maximum k elements in this heap. All right, so uh, that is an n log k approach. You can also remove elements whenever uh, they are not big enough. So n log k is the approach that you're looking at. And the final thing that you can do is uh, is user dq, which gives you an on approach, right? So these two approaches, I mean, this approach is terrible, the first one. The second approach may work, but is probably going to give you a timeout. So rather than work on that, use the dq solution. Uh, I won't be discussing about the dq solution in this editorial because it's getting really long, but uh, I'll be posting some relevant links in the description, all right? So now, finally, we have got the solution. Let, let me just write it down again. f of move left index is equal to sum of, for this move, starting with left index, minus the maximum among all three, uh, actually, next moves for all indexes. So this query now, this query of max, can now just be answered in O n time because of our DQ solution, right? Every time you need to answer this query for move number of times. So that in turn is equal to m into O n. So that is order of m into n. And this is the final solution that you have, right? So the complexity of this is uh, within bounds of the problem. And you're going to be finding out the max using a DQ data structure, using this recursive formula. And uh, of course, you can't use recursion here because it will take too much time. So we'll be storing for each move and each left index, we'll be storing it in an array. So that makes it dynamic programming. I'm sure you haven't understood it completely, so let's just take an example. So finally, we're ready to prove that whatever we are talking about was correct. Uh, we have this array B, input array, also input array A of size 7, B is of size 2, two moves that can play. Uh, the DQ matrix is going to be 7 plus 2 because of that. And we have base conditions. If I plus the last move is less than N, so of course in the base condition we are going at the last move. And if the size of that, so if i plus 2 is less than or equal to n, so that is 7, then you are supposed to do this calculation, otherwise just print 0. So i uh, less than or equal to 5, then you do this calculation. So if i is 6, then you just set 0 here. And the reason why this makes sense is because when you're going at index 6, you can't choose a subarray of size 2 at all. So we just print 0 over there. Yeah, let's keep this neat. If that is not the case, let's, let's start from 0 now. So f of 0, in fact, f of, yeah, the last move. So uh, at index 0, we have to take the sum of all elements up to 0 plus b of move that is 2 minus 1 minus sum of minus 1. So yeah, sum of minus 1. So sum of minus 1 doesn't make sense. That is equivalent to 0. It's minus 0, which is just this. That is sum of 1. Sum of all elements up to 1. Now what does that come out to be? 12 plus 90 which is 102. Let's just write this in blue. 102 is what we're looking at. Similarly, for the other conditions, it will be 90 plus 4, which is 94. Over here, it will be 22, 118. We're taking two elements together because that's the size of the subarray. And then uh, 170, yeah. And 160, is it? Yeah. So now our base conditions are complete. 
However, any time that you have f of any move and i, if i is i plus b of move should be less than or equal to n for you to process it at all. Otherwise, you just set it to zero. So over here we have again for the, we are taking a move back. We are going at move number zero. B of zero is five. So i plus five less than or equal to n, which is seven. So i should be less than or equal to two. For the first move, I should be less than or equal to 2 for you to process it. 3, 4, 5, 6 will have value 0. For the same reason why there's 0 over here, you can't take a subarray which is less than the required length. Finally, we can calculate this value. So the sliding window size in this is B of move minus B of the next move minus 1 because uh, you're crunching the array from both sides, so it's minus one. And so that comes out to be five minus three, five minus two, minus one, which is two. So this is your sliding window size, all right? You come here, your sliding window starts here, because it's of size two, it ends here, okay? So at this point, you get a payoff, the sum of all elements from 2 to 6, size is 5, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that comes out to be 22, these 3 are coming out to be 162, 60 plus 22, 282, minus the max of the sliding window, alright, so uh, the sliding window here is 180 and 170 so initial computation will happen you will need two computations basically these two and that will be 170 which is the max in the window right now right so this is 170 subtracting we get uh, 112 so that is one answer for index 2 for index 1 we need to slide the window up. So the window has been slid up and uh, the maximum now is 118. So we are using a DQ. This is happening all automatically but the DQ implementation will ensure that this is fast. 118 is what we have. The payoff here is, is you lost a 90 and you got a 90. So yeah, you, you lost nothing basically, it's still 282 minus 118 this time. So that is uh, 64, 164. Yeah. So the, the second answer is 164. For the third one, which is at index 0, uh, your sliding window again slides up. It starts from here, goes all the way up here. 94 and 22 are your elements. The maximum is 94, so you have minus 94 here. And your payoff is the first five elements. So that's, that's equal to 190, 200 plus 12, 212, 224. I hope my calculations are right. Uh, 120, 130, yeah. 130 is what it's coming out to be. And to get the final answer, we take the maximum among all the elements in the very first row, in the very first column. So that is 164. And to make sense of this answer, 164, we can go to that index 1. So this is the range that we are selecting. Uh, our opponent is selecting 118. So that is over here, index 3. This is the range our opponent is selecting, and so that's why you have this uh, 118 subtracted from 282. What if we are taking this range from 4 index 2 to index 6? We would have lost a 90 
and gained a 90. So our payoff would have been the same as shown here, 282. But our opponent would have chosen index 170, which is our index 4, over here. So they would have taken off 170 from our total sum. And that would have hurt us. Instead, we are allowing them only to take out 118 now. So that's why this is the optimal move. So that's it. That's it. Interval is solved. Uh, in case you have any doubts or suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I'll be sharing some relevant solutions and uh, links in the description. Uh, if you have any data structures or algorithms to suggest, please do so. I'll be happy to help. And uh, until next time, thank you.